life. everyone, welcome back to The Current, the quick response news program from Jockey Club TE College. Where we report on the latest issues, events and culture. I'm Kelvin. And I'm Tracy. That's so sad. What's sad? Well, I know it's just a movie, but Hellboy had to kill the last elemental on Earth, even though it was actually a good creature that restores health and life to the planet. I see what you mean. Now that it's gone, the world has lost an amazing creature unlike any other creature in existence. Sadly, this kind of thing isn't just happening in the movies. Worldwide, as many as one million species, including animals, plants, and insects, may disappear within decades. This is the grim outlook in the new 1,500-page UN report. It is the most in-depth research yet into the state of world biodiversity. Released May 6, the research was done by a global panel of scientists. The study was endorsed by 130 countries, including the US, China and Russia. The assessment demonstrates the importance of biodiversity, the continuing loss of biodiversity, the underlying causes of the loss of biodiversity, the plausible futures of biodiversity, and a range of policies, practices, and governance structures that can be used by governments, the private sector, and civil society to conserve and sustainably use biodiversity. The damage is human-made and related to climate change Invasive species, pollution, and trade activities. Without a drastic increase in conservation, biodiversity loss will accelerate through 2050, threatening economies and livelihoods in rich and poor countries alike. But don't we all know all of this? That there are species facing extinction? Sure, but this report is shocking because it says the situation is much more serious than we thought. And the loss of species is happening so much faster than we feared. It really is disaster level stuff. A lot of attention is given to big animals that are endangered, like rhinos, tigers, etc. But Hong Kong doesn't have any of those. Which endangered species should we be worried about here? Well, we have the pangolin, which are disappearing because people use them for traditional Chinese medicine, the Chinese white dolphin, the green turtle, the Hong Kong cascade frog, the black-faced spoonbill, and many more. I don't want any of this to disappear. But, well, if they are endangered insects, fine, let them go. Seriously? What about bees? We need bees! Their loss will be devastating for the whole world. Bees play a crucial role on Earth. Some even claim that if they go extinct, humanity would be next. So with the dramatic decline in bee population, should we be worried? What happens if the bees all die? 
Simply put, if a plant produces a flower, you can bet that bees help them reproduce. This long-standing working relationship evolved with flowers being bright and fragrant to attract bees, and the bees' fuzzy, velcro-like bodies helping them to efficiently transfer pollen from the male part of the plant to the female part. This seemingly simple mechanism is directly responsible for the production of 70% of fruits, vegetables, seeds, and nuts we consume on a daily basis. 70%, which translates into almost $200 billion in global agriculture revenue. This huge responsibility is accomplished by droves of commercial bees reared by professional beekeepers for the sole purpose of being transported to farms or orchards to pollinate crops. But since 2006, these hard-working, busy bees have been mysteriously disappearing. This colony collapse disorder has seen an average of one-third of commercial bees abandoning their hives. In fact, some beekeepers have even reported that 90% of their bees have simply buzzed off. In some colonies, mites, viruses, and parasites have been to blame, but many are now looking at a class of insecticides called neonicotinoids. This neurotoxin is used to kill off crop-eating insects and pests, but also affects the central nervous system of bees when they consume contaminated nectar. And since nectar is brought back to hives, the entire colony can be affected, leading to mass confusion and disorientation. On top of this, other factors such as extremely cold and long winters, a lack of genetic diversity in commercial bees, and less variable nectar in the fields may be at fault. If the trend continues, entire food chains and webs may be at risk. Take almond plants, for example. The hulls of these nuts are used as feed for farm cattle and chickens. Fewer bees means fewer almonds, which could mean declining livestock and ultimately less milk, cheese, eggs, and meat production. Not to mention almonds are used in cereal, baking, and many other food products. Beef and dairy cows would also be harshly affected by the vanishing alfalfa fields, which are used to harvest hay for cattle. Looking for that morning buzz? Considering bees pollinate Coffea arabica, whose seeds we grind for coffee, you can count that out. Without bees, our diets would consist of mostly corn, wheat, and rice, as they are wind-pollinated plants. Like your clothes, not only is cotton the biggest cash crop in the US, it also makes up about 35% of the world's fiber use. So you can forget about those blue jeans, towels, mattresses, and high-quality paper products. Simply put, we'd be living in a completely different world without bees, not to mention suffering a substantial economic strain from their disappearance. So while we may not necessarily go extinct should the downward trend persist, a world without the buzz of bees would definitely sting. It's all just too much. I wonder if students have heard about these terrifying reports and which species they care about. And maybe don't. That's a harsh question. But let's see what they say. Have you heard about the UN report saying that one million species will die soon if we don't make big changes? No. No, I haven't. No. Nope, never heard about that. No. No, I've never heard about it. No. No. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. How does it make you feel to think that one million species might disappear from the planet? I feel it upset. Some beautiful animals will disappear in this world. Kind of sad. Only kind of? Yeah. I'm shocked because I knew that there are a lot of animals that were going extinct, but I never knew that there were that many. I feel really bad because the environment is our home and we just destroyed it. I feel terrible because it's all our fault. We did this. It's kind of shocking. I think this is so terrible because we can't see them if they disappear. I feel really guilty because humans are the biggest reason that animals are going extinct. I feel very sad because lots of animals are very cute. If they go extinct, I won't be able to see them again. Choose five animals that you want to keep forever. This one, this one, this one this one and this one. Why the blobfish? They are cute. The bees and uh, tigers, leopards and uh, rhinos and penguins I guess. This one, this, this one and this one. Dolphin, butterfly, tiger, the elephants and the birds. Why the dolphin? Because dolphin is beautiful and they can swim really fast. Polar bears, um, this one, tiger, I don't know, this one, and maybe elephant. I want the mosquitoes. You want the mosquito? Yeah, because they look kind of important to the environment. And also the bee, and the tiger, and maybe rhino. Wait, one, two, three, four, yeah. Also the polar bear. Dolphin, the polar bear, the elephant, the tiger, the bird. I will choose the... Elephant, the tigers, the turtle, the monkey, and what is it? The 
the eight. I want to keep gorilla, elephant, this one, and tiger. Maybe snake. Why the snake? Because they are cool. I will choose blobfish. Why would you choose the blobfish? Because I think blobfish, the face is very special. <laughs> yeah. And then I will choose polar bear, um, dolphins, and then snakes, and tiger. Why snakes? Because I think some of the snakes are very beautiful. Uh, the color is very special. Uh, choose five that you don't care about. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. You don't want the orangutan? They're ugly. I don't want the mosquito and the ugly fish. And uh, pretty much I want to keep everything else. You have to choose three more. <sighs> All right, the orangutan. Uh, that ugly thing over there, <laughs> and uh, oof, uh, the moth. Why the orangutan? It's ugly. I don't want this one, this, this one, this one, and this one. All the bugs and reptiles, right? Yeah. I don't want flies, I don't want snakes, orangutan, turtles, and this ugly fish. Snakes, snakes, I hate snakes, and mosquito. This one is ugly. <laughs> and this one, I don't know what is this. I think this Mr. Ugly Fish, and then uh, I don't know what is this. Uh, maybe snake, uh, maybe turtle, maybe this thing. I don't want the beetle, the moth, and the mosquito, and the bee, the snack. Because they're all dangerous for us. How's a moth dangerous? I don't know, but sometimes they quite annoy me. I don't want the snake, the mosquito and this and snake again okay. yeah the snake and this disgusting thing I want this one this one this one bees and this one you don't want bees yeah because they're very annoying and they will bite me don't you like honey no i'm actually allergic to honey what should we do to save all these species we shouldn't pollute the environment so much use less paper and plastic bags because it's destroying the environment. Maybe just kill all the humans and let the animals live. Cut down these trees. I would choose to walk instead of taking any transport there if it's not too far because it's safe energy and just less pollution because I don't use car. We should collect six infinity stone and snap the finger. No really what would you do? Uh, maybe save some energy, like take more public transport. We could provide them some suitable place for them to live. We should stop developing the forest because there are so many animals or plants living there. When we develop their forest, they will lose their home. We should stop overfishing and overharvesting because we are taking their home. I think we should not destroy the natural environment again, such as those coral rifts or rainforests because they have a lot of animals there. If if they destroy it, there is the animals will not have the place to live. Pretty much everyone hates mosquitoes and insects. And no one wants any of the big animals to disappear, obviously. Well, no one wants any of them to disappear. Of course, we want to see all these creatures thrive and flourish. Is there anything we can do? Luckily, the report doesn't just report causes, it also offers solutions. Can anything be done to arrest this decline? The report makes very clear that actually this is something we can change, that we can turn this around, and that, but the problem with that is that it requires what they call transformative policy change. Now, they've listed many different areas in which they want governments to pay more attention to. One aspect which they've highlighted for consumers and for people is our consumption choices and how we need to make sure that we spend we, that we consume less, for, for starters, but also that we waste less. They really have made some quite radical suggestions, such as saying that we need to steer ourselves away from what they call this limited paradigm of economic growth. So what they're saying is that our current economic system is not really fit for fighting the loss of biodiversity that we're seeing and the consequences that that has for us. Basically, we need to change the way we think and live all of society be transformative and fast. That sounds impossible. But it would be to save the whole world. This is truly a horrible topic and there is so much more that we could say about so many things. 
We'll focus in on one of these topics in our next episode on invaders. <laughs> But for now, that's all for this episode of The Current. Thank you for watching and, and don't get bummed out. And if I do? Go home and hug yourself, animal. See you next time.